I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies to help you survive and even thrive through the crisis that now everybody is aware is unfolding around us, except apparently the stock market. Okay, so we're going to do the rest of the uh, questions that came in from the Q&A and Christos D asks, what would you recommend us doing with our IRA? Pull it out and pay the 20% on taxes or parking it on a, in a savings account. Please advise. Well, first of all, I always have to tell you that you need to do whatever it is that you are comfortable with. I can tell you what I did for my, I had a SEP IRA and I liquidated it pulled that money out, paid my taxes, penalties, if whatever the costs are, although there have been some changes on um, whether or not you're going to have to pay penalties on 401ks, IRAs uh, these days. But I did, and then I converted it into collectible gold coins because that's for my future. You know, I would much rather pay the, ta I mean, you're always going to have to pay the taxes. But taxes have to go up to pay for all of this government spending. I mean, it's really simple. So this is probably your cheapest tax that you're going to pay. But of course, again, you have to do what you're comfortable with. But that's what I would do. That's what I did do for myself. SD, if the real estate prices tank 80%, should you buy it? Yes, you should, but you want to make sure and see that bottom cup formation because that is an accumulation pattern they could still drop 95 percent we don't know in japan it was 95 on commercial real estate 85 on residential real estate so the answer is yes but you also want to be selective because we're changing i mean you have to think do i really want to buy a mall mm, maybe you do maybe you don't do I want to buy a, an essential government building? Well, that might be a much better idea. So you need to be selective and you need to wait for that opportunity. But I know that that is part of my personal strategy is to convert some of my gold holdings into income producing real estate. And when I start to do that, I will let you know. And uh, Dexer22000 asks, as to paper gold, didn't COMEX have a default a few days ago? Well, yeah, they actually did, but it was covered up by repaying in paper and they increased the size of the contracts. So yeah, COMEX, I mean, there's so much more paper. In fact, according to the debt clock, which I happen to have right here. Uh, let's see, paper gold ratio is now 88.01 to one. And I'm pretty sure that they're just referring to the exchanges because I can tell you personally, the last time that I, and I am gonna do something on the biz and their uh, derivative holdings soon. I just pulled it up because I think somebody asked a question about it. And I thought, well, we haven't looked at it for a while, so we should. So that's coming in the future. But uh, before they changed how they accounted for derivatives, it was, I, th I think, wow, now I just had a little brain thing. But I think it was 62,000 ounces of paper gold to one ounce of physical so I think this 88 to 1 is, um, is frankly just from the exchanges, the COMEX, the London Bullion Exchange. And paper gold, paper silver ratio is now 174.2 ounces of paper to one physical ounce of silver. So let's see if you, and Julie Cash asks, so if you only have bullion gold and if they confiscated gold and becomes illegal to own it, will we not be able to use it? Well, look, the other piece that always happens is a black market pops up. So I can't exactly tell you that you absolutely wouldn't be able to use it someplace. 
uh, but you wouldn't, you most likely would not be able to get fair market value for it if it was illegal to own. So I kind of like to look at, well, what if I'm right and what if I'm wrong? And since the, I mean, frankly, the lion's share of what I've accumulated since I've been accumulating since 2010 has been with the historically low premiums. You know, there's all different kinds of even collectible gold. So again, it goes back to the strategy. What am I trying to accomplish? If I want to, if I'm thinking that I'm going to convert a certain level of my gold into real estate, we just had that question then I'm going to do one kind of collectible gold. If I think I'm going to do it into stocks, then I'm going to do another kind. If I'm going to do it for, you know, I mean, it just depends. I have some people that would go into it for health reasons. If you have a health issue, you always want to make sure that you can take care of your health. And if you have a chronic illness, that is really important. That's a different kind. So what I can really do is encourage you to talk to one of our strategy specialist consultants that they can lay it out on a spreadsheet and determine based upon your personal goals, circumstance, and what you have to work with, what is most likely to support those goals. But you've got to establish those first and then it tells you what to do. You know, if they do an overt confiscation, no, you're not going to be able to use, uh, you know, I mean, look, in 33, they allowed you to keep five ounces. So, you know, maybe in the fractional gold coins, you'd be okay, but it's going to be a much bigger problem. So if you do the collectibles, you know, I can't say that they won't confiscate them, but history shows us that they haven't done it. So the likelihood of that happening, I think, is minuscule. Additionally, if someone paid eight million bucks for one ounce of gold, yeah, I'm thinking they either write the laws or they have the ability to influence those that write the laws. And since the government has to, if they take it away, they have to leave you what they call fair value. That's easy to do with bullion. It's almost impossible to do with collectibles. So that's the category that I'm most comfortable being in. And there are all different levels. Give us a call. You'll, we'll talk to you about it and make sure that whatever it is that you're doing um, supports your goal. And, and even if that is bullion, we have bullion as well. Uh, and Jet Quailsend, is there any particular possible estimation on when the reset might occur? I'd like to know how much time I have available to collect gold and silver. You know, okay, I don't really know exactly, exactly when, but this is what I do know. We have to feel a lot more pain. So what's coming ahead of us probably by the end of this year is going to be a series of defaults that whether or not the central banks can print enough money to keep the markets supported and liquefied is anybody's guess, but I'm thinking not. So I think by the end of this year, it's probably going to look pretty darn critical out there. And then we go into 2021. Let's see what happens in 2021. <laughs> All the contracts that are tied to the LIBOR interest rate must be reset. So if I had to guess, I would say that it's going to be really horrendous by the end of 2021. So I think it's going to get bad by the end of this year, but I don't think it's, that's the worst that we're going to see. I think, I think it, it could easily happen in 2021. And what I'm watching that might give us a little heads up is the monetary velocity. Because I think we're going to see universal basic income. And hey, I could be wrong about this, but I would bet that we would see that some form of it by the end of this year. And the other piece that we haven't seen yet is these governments and, and corporations using the coronavirus to take control from the population. Now, 
is that going to sit okay with the population? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe it won't. And I think that there is a real strong possibility that by next year, we could see global revolt happening in a much larger way than we did before. Because as history has shown us, pandemics always exacerbate that income and equity inequality. And this is no different. We're already seeing it. So, you know, I don't know when, you know, I can't tell you it's going to be Tuesday morning at 835, but it could be. I mean, I was as shocked as anybody when this whole market route began, even though we've been paying attention and watching. So all I can tell you is do it as quickly as you can. Don't dilly dally. Don't think, oh, I'm going to make all this money in the stock market and then, because the physical market is drying up, period. So, you know, I've been accumulating since 2002. What does that tell you? Am I done accumulating? Heck no, I'm not. Heck no. What am I going to hold instead of it? Fiat? Uh, no. A certain percent? Yeah, that's your first line of defense. So I'm not saying you don't need any cash. And as many have now learned, it's pretty handy to have a little bit of cash at this juncture as you go into a crisis. But that's all part of the strategy. So call us and we'll work it through. And when do I think real estate will be better to buy with gold? Before or after the reset? Um, most likely it will take place during because the reset is not just one second in time. I mean, an overnight devaluation like we saw in, in um, Venezuela is, I mean, they just lop off zeros and then happens just like that. But even inflation is part of the reset. So real estate is going to be better to buy during the reset and before, most likely, before we go into the new system. And we're going to watch for that pattern, that cup formation. And again, when I start to convert, I will let you know what I'm doing. But in the meantime, you can look for that pattern. And, um, you know, bulky Balkaron is Bitcoin and others safe to buy. Well, if it's completely intangible, you know, everybody's, again, everybody has to do what they're comfortable doing. Here's the thing. I don't know, and nobody else does either, what other than gold and physical gold and silver and physical assets, what is going to survive this mess? And Bitcoin came out in April of 2009. It has not been tested in a crisis. So I don't own any. At this moment, I don't plan on buying any that is completely intangible. So if I change my mind, and I'll tell you if I do, and I'll tell you why I do, if I do, but no, I don't own any Bitcoin. I have no, or or Ethereum or any of those, and nor do I intend to buy any because I don't think that they're safe. But you got to do what you're comfortable with. And there are a lot of people that are comfortable with it. I'm not. And Andrew Grice says, if gold is likely to be revalued and tenth of an ounce is $1,100, is that too high for barter? Uh, well, it could be, but it depends on what you're buying. And that's why I prefer silver for barter to gold, but that 10,000 is probably just about right for property taxes. So, you know, I like silver for barter. That's how I've built my position. And again, it depends on what, if you're buying a boat, that might work. So it just kind of depends. If you're buying an apple, that's not going to work. I mean, because what has changed? You're not going to get any change back. So it becomes irrelevant. And that's why I like dimes, you know, Th almost three quarters of an ounce of silver in a dime. No, not three quarters of an ounce. It's three quarters of a tenth of an ounce. I'm sorry. Uh, and ready or not, I moved my 401k into short-term reserves, company fixed income fund. So far, it's holding steady. But we've talked about S 
FTRs being at risk at later on? At what point would that happen? Well, you're referring to money markets and, you know, as long as, at what point would that happen? Boy, it's really been happening since September, frankly. You know, it's just been covered up. So, you know, in a 401k, if you have the right to do, if you have a, the right to withdraw because they did make that easier these days and they did remove penalties, so that might be something you wanna look at. If you don't, you might also check with your administrator to see if you can do an in-service withdrawal roll over election, in which case you can typically roll 50% or up to $50,000 into an IRA, and then you can take distribution, pay your taxes, pay your penalties, but they've waived the penalties these days as well. So there's lots of different options, but you know, if it's inside the system, it's vulnerable, and I don't care what you have. And if you stop and you think about what has just happened in March, when did you know? We've been talking about this forever. How many times did I have people say, what crisis, what crisis? You always talk about a crisis and everything looks fine. Well, that's why I say in my intro, yeah, everybody now knows that we're walking through the crisis. That was a black swan. The COVID virus is a black swan event and you know, could there be more black swan events? Mm, I don't know. Oil was minus 37 bucks. And the last time I looked at it was somewhere, the June contract contract was somewhere near 24 bucks a barrel when you've got tankers and tankers of oil that's headed not just to the US, but you've also got no place to store all of this oil with a major global slowdown. I mean, when was the last time, you know, presuming you're, you're staying home, when was the last time you put gas in your tank? So, uh, yeah, I think that anything is possible. I don't think we're gonna know when uh, you're, you lose that opportunity to pull funds out of your 401k, to pull funds out of the stock market. You're not gonna know. They're not gonna call you up and say, oh, by the way, you might wanna get it out because we're gonna make it impossible for you tomorrow at noon. We're not gonna know, so just get ready. That's the point of a plan, executing the plan and have patience. So um, again, because this has been a question that's come up, all gold and silver is not sold out. You still have time to call us and get positioned and talk to our consultants and our strategy specialists so that they can make sure that the kind of gold and silver that you're buying actually supports the goals that you have and works within your budget. So um, last week on Wednesday, we did a great boots on the ground interview about the transition, what it looks like and feels like it smells like into a new currency because that's coming up. So I think it's critical that everybody understands it. And next week, I'm going to be with Sean at SGT. And, you know, as you guys know, those are typically very, very, very good discussions. He's such a smart guy. And I always, frankly, enjoy them. We have so much to talk about. Additionally, for a coffee with Lynette, I have Shad Sullivan, who is a rancher and regional director for RCAF USA. And we're going to be talking about the supply chain. And also how we are importing food while our farmers are forced to destroy food. So that should be a very, very interesting conversation. If you have any questions about this or anything else, questions at itmtrading.com. Make sure you visit our blog. That's where you find all the images and all the links so you can do your own due diligence. Don't take my word for anything. Of course, this will be posted on Brighteon. And if you want to talk to one of our consultants and strategy specialists, just click that Calendly link below and set up a time. If the time that you want is not available, give us a call, 888-696-4653, because we love human contact and we're all here to be of service. Keep in mind, 
that financial shields are made of physical gold and silver. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.